this right here is a compact 1080p gaming PC and it will play any game at full HD with no bother. Jedi Survivor, don't worry about it mate. Cyberpunk 2077 on the high preset, excellent performance. So stick around to see how I built this compact 1080p gaming rig. And also I've benchmarked it so you can see how it gets on. At its heart, this PC has the Intel Core i5-12400F and thanks to recent price drops on Amazon, you can find one of these for about £114 now I believe, which is absolutely excellent value for a 6-core, 12-thread chip on the LGA 1700 platform. So, does this platform have as much lifespan as AM5? Not particularly, no, but you still have a slight upgrade path if you wanted to go to something like a 14900K if you fancy running up your power bill and if you fancied gaming at high frame rate. But nevertheless, in the meantime, the 12400F will do just fine. Also a big advantage which LGA 1700 has, which AM5 doesn't, is DDR4 and 5 support. So you could potentially get some more affordable memory and that's what I did today with 32 gigabytes of Corsair DDR4 memory running at 3200 MHz. I know Corsair Dominator isn't the cheapest memory in the world, it's actually pretty expensive, but I had it lying around and you could always use some Vengeance or some other brand of DDR4 and still save quite a bit of money compared to the newer memory standard. Keeping the topic on memory, to store all of our games, I've got a Western Digital SN770 2TB NVMe Gen 4 SSD. And this is basically where it's at for PC gaming right now. Two terabytes of NVMe storage is what you want because the size of games these days, they're not particularly that small, are they? So yeah, if you wanted to save some money though, you could always go with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 and luckily the B660 Pro motherboard that I've got today has four DIMM slots. So you could always upgrade that later down the line and you could go with a one terabyte SSD to save a bit of costs. Yes, I recommend two terabytes and 32 gigabytes, but sometimes your budget won't allow for that and that's totally fine. So I'd recommend cutting these down. However, do not use a hard drive to boot off of in 2024. It's really not worth it. Here at Pro Yum Yum PC, we're not big fans of stock callers. That's why I've reached out to my friends over at Noctua to send out their NHD12L compact caller. This caller is an absolute beast in a small form factor and to be honest it's probably a bit overkill for our i5 today but that's a good thing because you will have quieter operation as the fan does have to spin slower especially compared to the stock caller. And the NHD12L is perfect for a compact build like this. It's only 145mm tall while still having a 120mm NF A12 fan which is one of the best fans on the market right now. It's got a dual tower design and it features five heat pipes, so managing the heat from especially a locked i5 is not going to be a problem at all. And of course, it's got Noctua's legendary SecuFirm 2 mounting mechanism, which is one of the best in the game, especially for air coolers. I'm yet to see a mounting mechanism which is better than this. It has support for both LGA 1700 and AM5 natively right out of the box, while still supporting older platforms like AM4 and LGA 1150X. Also, if in the future you need more mounting hardware, Noctua have you covered. As long as you provide them with a proof of purchase, Noctua will send out a mounting kit free of charge, which is just an absolute W. And lastly, in terms of looks, the NHD12L looks absolutely incredible. It looks nice and sleek in a build like this. And I think if you're going for that non-RGB understated aesthetic, it's probably the caller for you. So make sure you check it out in the description link below with my Amazon affiliate links. And a big thank you to Noctua for sending this out. I wanted to build a somewhat compact PC without having to pay the ITX tax. That's why I bought the Asus Prime AP201 Compact Micro ATX case and I think my purchase decision was justified because this PC is only about 33 litres in volume and it doesn't really take up that much space on my desk. So I think this case in terms of a compact one, especially for Micro ATX, is 
perfect for what I need it to do. It fits the sort of bigger Micro ATX motherboards like the B660-A Pro I've got today. So they're the ones with the four DIMM slots. So that's nice to see right there. And it will fit a somewhat chunky graphics card. I've seen people put like 4080 Founders Editions in here and they've been totally fine. As long as your graphics card doesn't exceed 338 millimeters of length, I believe it is, you should be good to go. Also, it's mesh all around it as well. I'll, I'll put the side panel on now, actually. So, if we just put that on, there we go. As you can see with the mesh side panel on, it does look very sleek. They also do a tempered glass version as well, which is slightly more expensive off the top of my head. But I think this looks better in my opinion as the mesh does look pretty unique. And of course, like with any other gaming PC build, the graphics card is the most important part. And that's why today I went with the Radeon RX 6600. It's set for 1080p gaming even in 2024 with its 8GB of VRAM. A fairly decent memory configuration if you disregard the 128-bit memory bus. However, I can let that slide because the performance at 1080p rasterized performance is absolutely excellent from this graphics card. I took a look at it a few months ago in a video which you can watch up there or there. I never know where YouTube puts it. But I determined it to be one of the best value graphics cards for 1080p gaming in 2024. But how does it perform with the i5 12400F? Well, there's only one way to answer that and I've tested it at 1080p. So let's see what the benchmarks are saying. Hogwarts Legacy on the high preset is up first today and here we see brilliant performance with 83 frames per second on average and the 1% low not trailing it too far. This means at 1080p, Hogwarts Legacy is perfectly fine on this set of hardware. And I would say that i5 complements the RX 6600 just fine in Hogwarts Legacy. If you wanted more graphical fidelity, switching up to the Ultra preset could be a good option as well. So with PC gaming, you've always got options open to you and that is the brilliant thing about it. Jedi Survivor on the high preset was kind of a big ask for this combination of hardware today with just 56 frames per second on average and that 1% low wasn't looking brilliant. So what I'd recommend is changing up a few settings to get that average above 60 FPS and maybe uh, tighten up that 1% low to that average frame rate as well. But it's still playable at the end of the day. On the other hand though, you'd probably be expecting a bit more performance from this hardware. Cyberpunk 2077 on the high preset performs relatively well, getting just shy of 70 frames per second, and that 1% low is just under 60 FPS as well. So there's no performance issues right here. Leave ray tracing off in Cyberpunk because the RX 6600, despite having RT cores, can't really do it that well. But rasterization in Cyberpunk 2077 is no issue at all. Of course, Fortnite is going to be fine for a heavily competitive experience, getting north of 270 frames per second on average. But that 1% low is almost half of the average frame rate, which isn't that brilliant. But as we know from previous testing, Fortnite isn't particularly great with its 1% lows. It is prone to quite a bit of stuttering. So that is a bit of an issue to look out for. But either way, in my experience, it was totally playable, despite those little stutters that can happen from time to time in Fortnite. Spider-Man Remastered on the very high preset just shows how well optimized this game is because the average frame rate is triple digits today, which is brilliant. That 1% low is trailing it behind by quite a bit. However, I'm not that concerned because I take my benchmarking while Spider-Man is web slinging and this is the most intensive part of the game from my experience, particularly the 1% lows. So in regular gameplay, the 1% lows should be better for you. But with this performance at full HD, you're definitely set for 1440p on the very high preset as well. Or maybe you could even enable ray tracing at 1080p, which is not something I thought I was going to say today. The last game I'm taking a specific look at today is God of War and good news because on the ultra preset, you're still set for 60 frames per second, which is great. The 1% low only trails it by 11 FPS as well, which is not too bad in my opinion. The game felt nice and smooth throughout the benchmarking run. And if you wanted to play as the God of War on this hardware, you're totally set for it. 
So the 1080p gaming performance from this little compact gaming PC is nothing to complain about at all, particularly if you've got the same sort of expectations as me. I'm not this type of person that wants ray tracing enabled, that ultra presets in every single game, because that is not going to be a possibility with this. Let's be honest, AMD's ray tracing performance, particularly with RDNA 2, is not great but if you just keep it to rasterization with a graphics card like this you're going to be gaming just fine even in really hard games to run like jedi survivor you're still going to be set i think i ran it on the high preset off the top of my head and it did get just below 60 fps but if you were to do a bit of tweaking you'll be golden because yeah that's what pc gaming's about you can tweak around the settings and you can get the frame rates which you want. If we look at the competitive games, you're going to be having no issues here at all. You're set for 240 hertz experience at least, especially the 12400F, as it's a very competent CPU. And to be honest, you could get the i3 12100F, which is about 30 to 40 pounds cheaper than the i5 today, and you should be getting similar performance still because it shouldn't be holding back the RX 6600, maybe in a few esports games, you might be getting less performance, but it's not going to be that noticeable. On the other hand, you could also get a more powerful GPU like the RX 6700 XT that will pair well with the i5 12400F for instance. So if you were to ask me if I'm happy with the overall build, I'd say aesthetically yes, performance wise yes as well. This thing looks pretty great if you don't ask me, I'm the one who built it, of course I'm going to say it looks quite decent. But I think even the touch with the custom sleeves extension for the graphics card, I think it does really pop out, especially with the RAM as well as you can set that to purple in IQ. So is it a good looking PC? Yeah, would I rock this on my desk? Probably, definitely, maybe. And the Noctua NHD12L was basically designed for a case like this just look how perfect it looks in there it's a match made in heaven if you ask me and speaking of noctua make sure you check them out because they make awesome fans and coolers they're really nice people there over at noctua so with that being said there's going to be another pc build right up there if you want to watch that and have a good rest of your day